DaVinci Resolve 20.2 is out. It's been out for a day and I've already found two of my favorite new features in it. So welcome back to Creator Reality. Who started up a fog machine in my recording studio? We're gonna get back to that in just a moment. But I found two features in DaVinci Resolve 20.2 that I really like. So I'm John, and today we're going to take a look at those two features in Resolve. They're pretty cool things. I think they're going to save a lot of time and be fun for creatives. So let's start with the first one, which I do believe is available in the free version. The second one's going to be studio only. But if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments below. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here we have just any old clip. And if I select it, I can now come up to the clip menu, audio operations, and ripple delete silence. And I'm going to use that when I edit this uh, video because I'm going to show you a couple of neat things with it in just a minute. But I'm going to come in and tell you how it was towards the end of this video. Yeah, how the experience was of actually editing a video and not just demoing a feature. So it brings up this screen, remove silence. You can change the threshold, prehead, post tail, and minimum to strip. I don't know why it says 31, I want it 30, and I can type that in there, or I can grab this slider, but I'm gonna type it in there, and you can crossfade the audio, so it'll automatically add crossfades, we'll do that. Now the threshold is interesting, and I'll show you in just a second another way of using that, but the threshold dB by default is minus 12, and if I move this out of the way and bring my playhead over, we can zoom in, alt mouse wheel to zoom in, and you can see what it's cutting. And the six frames here, it picked up from an earlier session of Resolve. By default, if you double click any of these text items, it'll give you the, it'll take it back to default rather. So yeah, there's that one. But I have a 30 FPS timeline. So that's one second at a minimum it's going to cut. And the pre head and post tail are kind of making sure it doesn't delete the syllables. So if you followed my tutorial of the AI transcription feature, you'll remember that it cut some of the syllables, and I didn't like that. But this, it's visually showing us exactly what it's going to cut. And you can see that these are all less than a second long. So if I drag this down, as I do that, you'll see this one popped up, and then that one popped up. And if I bring it down to about 12, hey, look at that, 13, it's gonna cut out this little section here. But we're gonna bring that back to 30, because I don't wanna cut everything but it's cutting the end off and one, two, three, four spots. And then we have our uh, prehead and post tail. So with this nice long section visible here, if I drag this down, you'll see that the section on the right is moving. And then if I drag the post tail, you'll see that that section is moving. So if you have them lined up together, you're ensuring that you're not going to lose any kind of uh, speaking as part of this cut. So when I click remove, voila. Now it, if I alt mouse wheel to zoom out, you'll see that it's made the cuts. And then if I select one of them and I zoom in, you'll see that it's doing a quick crossfade there on the audio and that's two frames. Okay, cool. So control Z to undo that and that's two operations. Interesting, okay. So now let's take a look at a good use case for this and that's if you have two things together. So let's select this clip and alt drag to create a duplicate. And then we'll alt drag to create a duplicate of that. And we'll just cut this one down real quick and we'll zoom back in. And we wanna use this as our A roll, right? So we've clicked to select the clip of me talking and you'll see I've got some other audio and video there, no big deal. Clip, audio operations, ripple delete, delete silence, and there it is right there. And if I just keep the same settings I had before, I can click remove, and you'll notice that it cut everything. So if you're doing a talking head, and you have your A roll, the talking head, what you're looking at now, and then you have the screen recording, it'll cut the screen recording to go with it. So I have now used this feature to do the editing of this video. So editing John, take it away. All right, I just got done editing this and I'm looking at the clock on my computer. It took less than an hour. So it saved me about a half hour's worth of time cutting and trimming. I had a couple of things where I wanted to extend things and kind of tweak it a little bit, but overall it's really good. Uh, I did run into the problem with my little DVE effect that puts me up in the corner, you know, or down in this corner or whatever. 
that I should have applied first, but I know that for the future, which will save me an extra five minutes. So two thumbs up for this feature. It's very helpful in helping me out with saving time in editing. So there it was. And hopefully you got something out of that. Now let me show you a neat use case for this if you're in a noisy environment. So this is a video that I shot on my motorcycle. I'm riding along, right? Well, if we zoom in, you can see that even when I'm not speaking, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of noise, background noise, right? Well, if I select this clip, clip, and audio operations, ripple delete silence, it's gonna delete something at the beginning, okay? We see some quiet sections there, and that's it, right? I mean, we're scrolling along, and that's all it's getting rid of. Well, if we bring this DB up, so we drag it up, you'll see that it started grabbing a bunch of other points. So if we zoom in to look at these, I'm still talking here, okay. I'm still talking there, so I made it too high. Let's go down to about 3.5, and then it's gonna cut out all these blank sections where I'm riding along, but I'm not actually speaking. If I zoom in on this one, there's no speaking going on here, and if I drag it up ever so slightly, there we go we picked up on some audio. So in the case of my other channel where I'm riding my motorcycle, this could be a huge win, right? This is pretty neat. Click remove and boom, I've cut down my footage quite a bit. So we go from 1042 to 2625. So what is that, about 16 and a half minutes? And if I undo that, this clip length is 1704. So it cut out half a minute and I didn't have to do any work. Now I can just go in and swap the camera angles and I'm good to go if I do a multicam, multicam tutorial over here. So that was feature number one. Feature number two is for creatives and I think this is really neat. You saw it in the intro, let me show you how to use it. If you're on the edit page, here I have the clip and I've already marked out, hey, you wanna see markers? Right here, that's how to use markers. But I've already done a keyframed uh, increase and decrease of this cinematic haze which I think is a neat way to add atmosphere to a video without a lot of work, honestly, it's really easy. So if I drag in my clip again, we'll just drag it in over here. Nothing to it, nothing going on. We're gonna start in the color page because I think this is my preferred way of adding it. So I'm gonna click on the color icon, brings us in here, we have a blank node. Come hit the magnifying glass and type in haze and we have cinematic haze. We'll just drag that on, voila, it's done. Except it doesn't look right. First thing we need to do is click on depth map preview and you'll see that it's given us an alpha, so white versus black. It's created a depth map from my footage to show how far things away are or how close things are, words. So we can adjust this. We need the far limit and the near limit. So first I'm gonna change the near limit and that'll make me mostly black. You see a little bit on my shoulders, it's getting a little bit gray. And then the far limit, I can make this a little bit hazier by dragging that up. That's all I had to do. And then uncheck depth map preview and voila. Now there's no haze on my shirt. If I click on the node and press control D to disable, you can see that everything goes back to normal. Control D to re-enable and there's now a haze behind me. How cool is that? That's really slick, right? That's a neat little feature. I don't know how often I'm gonna use it. You should let me know in the comments how often you plan to use it. Maybe it'll come in handy. What's your use case? I wanna know. <laughs> but it's pretty cool and it works really well. And then when we come back to the edit page, I mean, admittedly, I have a NVIDIA 5070 Ti graphics card, so it's pretty beefy and I can play back at normal speed, 29.97 frames per second, and it's handling all this for me. And I can click around and I'm not exactly changing my distance to the camera, so it's not like a huge thing, but it's playing back at real time, which I think is really cool. Now, something else that's really cool is that you can use this on the edit page, but there's a caveat to that. Editing John here. Recording John forgot something. Let me show you how to find the cinematic haze feature in Resolve. Under Effects, if you don't see it, click Effects. Come down to Resolve FX Filters, and I'm gonna click on the magnifying glass and type in haze, and there it is, cinematic haze. You can just drop it on a clip, and then there it is. Of course, it looks ugly because I haven't duplicated the clip. Ta-da, we'll get to that in a second. 
If I click on here, you can see that everything looks uh, normal, right? But inside these two markers, I have added the haze and keyframed it. I'll show you how to keyframe it in just a minute. But if I disable with the D key, this uh, clip underneath, you'll see that it added transparency. I have no idea why it's doing it this way, but it is. So the trick is to alt drag on your video clip to make a duplicate and then add the cinematic haze to the duplicate on top. And then it'll look good when I press D and re-enable that. So if I disable the haze, everything looks normal, but when I re-enable it, there it is. So let's do a little keyframing. We're back to normal here. Let's say we wanna start the cinematic haze here. And you can do the same thing in the color page, but it's easier here for me because I'm more used to it. We'll come down to global blend and the global blend, which is really hard to say, is at zero. So I'm gonna click on the keyframe icon to create a keyframe. Shift right, three seconds, one, two, three, because I want three seconds or three seconds of fading in. You can move you can move the playhead however you want for this. It doesn't really matter. It's up to your personal preference, but I wanted three seconds. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna click on blend and I'm gonna type in one and press tab. And you'll notice that it's created a keyframe. And now I look really surprised. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't even plan this stuff, but it looks pretty cool. Now it's got the haze there. I'm going to click over here. I'm going to create another keyframe icon. I'm going to click over here, click in there, type zero, tab, and it's done. So now if I click on my back arrow, it'll go all the way here. And if I go too far, it's gone all the way to the left. But if I come here, here's the start. And when I play this back, you'll see that the fade uh, comes in or the haze comes in rather. And then it's going to play back and then it's gonna fade out here in a couple of seconds. I should have made markers to mark this one, but it's getting there. And one of the cool things is, while we wait for that to fade out, now it's faded out, good. Um, <laughs> Editing John, back again. I got another tip for you with this one. If your computer doesn't play this back in real time, there's an easy fix for that, let me show you. At the beginning of this clip, we have my cinematic haze showing up here, and you'll see the blue line. That is because I right-clicked on the clip, and I chose Render Cache OFX Filter, and I selected AI Cinematic Haze. You'll see it has the check mark next to it, which means it is now doing a render cache for this, so it's treating it just like the regular render cache for fusion output or for color output. So that's the two favorite features from DaVinci Resolve 20.2. As always, before you install a new version of Resolve, I highly recommend you do project backups. So check out that video here, and I hope you're having a great day. Until next time, be well. John out.